Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Yvonne Pendleton and I'm the director of Survey for those of you who don't know. And we are very happy to welcome you here to the Exploration Science Forum. We expect to have uh, our center director, Dr. Eugene Chu here in uh, just a few minutes. But while we're waiting for him to arrive, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some of the opening uh, reminders and the notes uh, that, that I need to tell you about. Uh, okay. And we're expecting uh, quite a large crowd here today, so I know the room isn't, isn't full yet. You may have to convey some of what I'm about to tell you to your friends if, uh, if they haven't heard uh, some of these updates. Okay, so first off, I'd like to, to welcome and, and acknowledge some of the special guests that we have with us today. Uh, this is a little bit awkward because I think some of them have not actually arrived yet. <laughs> so, so perhaps, I'm just looking in the audience, I don't see a single one. So I'm going to let that part go. Please remind me to do this in, in a minute, I will forget. Okay, all right. Well, I do know a couple of them. Okay, so from headquarters, we're very pleased to have with us Sarah Noble. Sarah, wave your hand, please. Sarah is our program officer from the Science Mission Directorate. And Ben Bussey. Ben, where are you? There's Ben, okay, there's Ben Bussey. And Ben is the chief scientist in the Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate. So we're very pleased to have them with us. Okay, great. And uh, is Jack Schmidt here yet? Do we have Jack? Jack? Jack Schmidt? No, I don't see him yet. Oh, Adele. There you are. Hello. Okay. We're very pleased to have with us Ms. Adele Morissette. Uh, Adele, would you stand up, please? Because I know some of these people don't know you. Uh, some of you will remember Adele. She's been here with us for a few of the forums now. And she's here to help us present the Michael J. Wargo Award today. And we're so pleased to have you here. Yay. Yay. And another guest that we have with us is Marcello Corradini. Marcello, would you please stand up and let the audience see you? And Marcello is here to uh, accept the award uh, on his sister's behalf. Uh, we have established a new award today in the name of Angioletta Corradini, and we so appreciate you being here today. Thank you. And you know, to both of you, Adele and Marcello, your, your presence here is really a bridge for us to our beloved colleagues. So uh, thank you for making the trip and for being here. We hope that you enjoy the parts of the forum that you're going to experience. Great, okay. So uh, before we move into the award section, we have a few little housekeeping details and things that I wanna make sure you know about. The first one just came to my attention about a half an hour ago, and that is in the program, this beautiful program that we're very thrilled to have, and it's very clear, but it's also kind of wrong. And, <laughs> uh, but, but it's only on day three that we have a mistake, so you're good for today and you're good for tomorrow, but on day three, we're going to have errata that you will be able to pick up and it just turns out two of the parallel sessions, uh, the right-hand side of your program in the morning, parallel session number six, and in the afternoon, both parallel sessions seven and eight, it looks like, uh, those need to be replaced with the errata. Uh, they look uh, very similar. They look like the kind of talks we would have, and they look familiar, and that's because they're from last year. So, okay. Right. Now these things happen and, uh, and actually I don't want it to overshadow the fact that this is an absolutely beautiful program that I think is crystal clear in so many ways and the person that I want to thank for that is Jennifer Baer who is our graphic designer and all, in fact all of the artwork that you see associated with the forum or with Servi is thanks to Jen and her style of branding. You can, you can see how it's coming through. In fact, on the back table, I want to point out to you in the corner near, near the room where uh, Ricky Guest and Ash Khan Nijad 
uh, do all of the magic that happens that enables us to have the tech uh, capability that we have. There's a table back there, and Teague Soderman is standing next to it right now. I'd like you to turn around and look at Teague. Teague is our lead communications person here at Survey Central. And what we have on that back table, we have our third year annual report, which is a compilation of the high level activities that uh, the uh, teams have put together and the Survey Central office has put together. And in fact, some of our international teams have also contributed to that. And I want to thank Teague for putting that wonderful report together. Please have a look at it. You can either take a hard copy home with you or you can look at it online and download the PDF if you don't want to carry something. But one way or the other, we really hope you'll take a look at that third year annual report. And then next to that, Teague is also modeling for us a copy of a children's book that Jennifer Bear has created this year. And this is showing students how art actually contributes to science and STEM education. She is putting the A in STEM to make STEAM, and she does it in a very nice way. And so all of the art in there is her original art, and she tells a story of how she helps mission designers uh, talk to people about you know, why their concept is so important and how art works its way into science and engineering. And then next to the book, we also have a poster that has all 13 of the current survey teams. So if you're kind of losing track of who's in survey right now, please go look at that poster. You'll see the principal investigators that lead these teams that are distributed all across the United States. We have um, 13 teams with maybe 30 to 50 people in each team, so quite a number of people now. Large number of those are students. We're really excited about the fact that we're training the next generation of explorers. And this forum is a wonderful platform where we bring everyone together, people that are actively engaged with Serbi now, people that might have been in the past or will be in the future, and beyond that, people in the broader community that come together because their disciplines added together build something bigger than if we just did our science or our engineering in a vacuum. And so that's what Survey's all about, and that's, this forum is a great platform to, to do that with. And now that more of you have come into the room, and I actually see another one of our VIPs just entered, I'd also like to welcome and thank Jack Schmidt for being here today. Jack, would you please stand up? Thank you. We are very happy to have you with us. Jack will be giving a scientific talk today, and he'll also be serving on a special panel that's going to happen today. This was an idea that Greg Schmidt came up with, Greg, our deputy director over here. And it's a wonderful idea to pay tribute. It's a memorial tribute to the Apollo program then and now. So look in your program. This part is correct. Uh, come to the panel today. And, and hear Jack and others uh, talk about that. Now tomorrow, we have another special panel. This is something new that we're trying out this year. And this is to engage the entire community on a topic that we at Survey think is very timely and very important. This is about water on the moon. And we started this conversation by having an internal workshop last November at the Johns Hopkins uh, APL uh, site. And uh, so we're broadening out that conversation today, I mean tomorrow, and we would like you all to be here for it. It'll be in plenary session tomorrow afternoon. Oh, and Eugene too has just arrived, so I'm so happy that we have our center director with us now. So I'm gonna let him come up and officially welcome and start the forum, and then I'm gonna come back and finish with a few more housekeeping details and then we're gonna get on to the awards presentation part. But please join me in welcoming our center director, Dr. Eugene Tu. All right, good morning everyone. I'd like to welcome you to uh, NASA Ames and back to uh, also the NASA Research Park. Uh, we're honored and excited here to be hosting 
this uh, exploration science form. I believe it's the fourth, fourth one. But actually, if you go back to its predecessor, the Lunar Science Forum, it's, it's 10, I think, now. So this is, this is a happy 10th anniversary here. Um, this forum uh, is always one of the highlights uh, for our center uh, hosting this uh, in the summers. Um, and it's also uh, of extreme importance and alignment uh, to our virtual institutes, of course, survey first and foremost, but also if you think about the other virtual institutes that we have, we have all four virtual institutes for the agency. Uh, the other two of the, f of the uh, ones that are directly relevant, I believe, are the Astrobiology Institute and the newly uh, started Small Spacecraft Systems Virtual Institute. So, you know, this, this really, these virtual institutes and what this forum represents uh, for me is really three key pillars of what we here at Ames uh, bring to the agency. Uh, one is multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary research. Uh, two is innovation. And then three is partnerships and collaborations. And that really embodies, I think, these virtual institutes and, and it embodies the forum itself. Uh, we are also very excited to have uh, four new um, partners for Survey starting this, this last year. I know uh, some of you are here. Um, and that brings, I think, to total 13, uh, 13 uh, members of Survey, uh, and that, that's quite exciting. And I know you're going to hear a lot of the great work being done over the next few days. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out, uh, particularly what this forum represents, but also for the virtual institutes, and in particular Survey, uh, the other thing this really serves is a way to help integrate uh, major efforts in the agency. Uh, Survey, for example, is funded by both uh, Science Mission Directorate and Human Exploration, two of the largest efforts within the agency, two of the largest mission directorates within the agency. And for us to be able to do our part in bringing the work uh, and the driving force behind those two mission directorates together uh, is quite exciting. And for me, it's basically a two-way interaction. Right? It's, it's science that helps drive exploration. It's exploration that helps enable science. Uh, and that's the type of synergies we are, we are really trying to, to model. And, and we, we're seeing that also uh, in other institutes, building on that model. As I mentioned, the newly formed Small Spacecraft Virtual Institute uh, is a collaboration between Space Technology Mission Directorate and the Science Mission Directorate. So we're really trying to bring that model of greater integration uh, and collaboration to the agency. I do want to specifically thank Yvonne for her leadership of Survey. Uh, and NLSI before, uh, it's, been, it's been terrific. Uh, of course, Greg uh, has been her able deputy and has really helped pull many of the things together. And then more, even more importantly, I know both of these would want to recognize, both of these folks would want to recognize the capable and, and highly professional staff uh, within the Institute. Um, so please, you know, as, as you go through the next few days, if there, if there are things that you think of or need, to help make your experience and uh, your forum here better, uh, please don't hesitate to call on our, our folks here. They're, they will step up, uh, step up to anything. Uh, so again, welcome. Welcome to Ames. Welcome to the Research Park. Uh, looking forward to the great things that will come out of these next few days uh, here at the uh, Science Forum, Exploration Science Forum. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for those remarks. Really appreciate it. You know, it's, uh, it's wonderful to have the central office of Survey located right here at NASA Ames. It's, uh, it's essentially a, a headquarters program office, but it's located here at a center. And, and Ames is so wonderful in supporting us and helping in so many ways. And we, of course, try to do the same back. So it's a great synergy. And uh, Ames is really turning out to be the place for virtual institutes. Okay, so uh, a few of the details that I want to make sure that, uh, that you understand about this year's forum because they're a little bit different from what we've done in the past. This year, we are not providing lunch the way we have in the past. We weren't able to do it this year. And uh, although I remember that one year when you guys told us lunch was so bad, you probably are glad we're not providing lunch. But 
Uh, but then it got better, right? We had some good lunches. Unfortunately, we can't do it now because well, it's a good reason that we can't do it now. We have so many students here at Ames that the Ames cafeteria is just impacted and, and they can't handle the extra load. But look at the good news there. More than 800 students are here working busily this summer and that means more training of the next generation of explorers. So it's a good reason. So what we have done to accommodate that is we've given you an ample time in the program to go off site for lunch. But wait, we hope that you won't go off site for lunch for at least a couple of uh, focus groups. And those focus groups happen on Tuesday and Wednesday, today and tomorrow. We hope that you will pick at least one of those, maybe two, and join us. This is a chance to get the community's input on a variety of topics. You can see the focus groups listed in the back of the program, or the, towards the back of the program. I have one correction that I want to make to the, uh, the payload and instrumentation focus group. That is actually meeting on Wednesday, not today, but Wednesday, and it's in the same room that is listed in the program. So payload and instrumentation on Wednesday. Now the next thing is, if you come to the focus group, we will uh, sell you a ticket so that you can get a piece of pizza and a soda for the great price, I think, of $10. What we need you to do is go buy those tickets as soon as possible so that we know how much pizza to get. And if you can buy today and tomorrow's tickets, or if you know that you're coming tomorrow, please buy those tickets soon at the registration desk, and then that will help us with the logistics and the planning for that. So your options for lunch, you can go off site. There's a list of restaurants in the front. You can see what the locals like. We approve those restaurants. Or you can come to the focus group, or you can do both. You can decide one day to come to focus group, one day to go off lunch. On Thursday, though, there are no focus groups, so everyone will need to go off-site for lunch on Thursday. Now, on Thursday, we also have Alan Stern coming to give our keynote address in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. So please be here for that. It's going to be a wonderful talk about you know, the New Horizons mission, everything we've learned, uh, just exploring uh, as, as only Alan and his team can. Right after Alan's talk, this is something that is not in the program, we're going to have a short question and answer period with both Jim Green, who's going to be virtually connected to us, and Ben Bussey, who's right here with us in person. So it'll be a short session, but if you have any questions for headquarters, that will be the time to ask about those. Uh, let's see, another detail about refreshments. So you see we have a lot of coffee in the back this time. My goodness, there are a lot of coffee urns back there. Well, we listened to you. You said we didn't have enough coffee. We're going to have coffee all day long. What we need you to do, though, is to buy the first cup. So you buy one cup a day and then you can have as much coffee as you want. We really need you to buy those cups though because we cannot subsidize any refreshments or any food with any taxpayer dollars. So we're putting the money out for this stuff and then we get paid back personally when you pay uh, for, for things like the coffee or the pizza lunches. So please help us out with that. Now, if you're environmentally conscious, like I hope you all are, and you don't want to waste a paper cup, you can bring your own cup. We still need you to buy that one cup, okay? So we need you to buy that ticket. Have I driven that point home? Okay. Now, for the poster sessions, we're going to entice you with adult beverages. Guess what? Same deal goes there. So Greg and I are on the hook for this one, and we're buying the adult beverages, and we hope that you will partake of them when the time is right and, you know, buy them. Okay. Uh, so, so they will be available for purchase at the appropriate time, and uh, Clive, no, now is not the time. Okay. There you are. Okay, so speaking of poster sessions, I just want to encourage you to come to them, and for the poster presenters, please put a time on your poster that you will be there so that people can connect with you. We have little 
um, note cards available and markers in the poster room, so you can just write that down and let people know. We're going to have the same posters up throughout the entire conference. This is a feature I really love of, of ESF, that we're able to do that. So uh, you, I know we don't have as much time built into the program as you would probably like for poster viewing, but they're up the whole time. So whenever you have a chance, you can go in there and have a look. Okay, this year the local organizing committee for the Exploration Science Forum was made up entirely of the Survey Central staff. This is a phenomenal group of people, like Eugene said earlier. And I'm impressed with the hard work and the professional attitude that they bring to their job every day of the entire year. The ESF is just a great opportunity for me to be able to publicly acknowledge that. So I've already called out people like Jen and Teague who do the, the artwork and the communications and putting the reports together. And the technical staff, Ricky and Ashcon and Maria Leas, who is doing the uh, speaker ready room. So all you presenters, please take your talks to her no later than the morning of your talk. That would be great. But there are so many more people that are doing things behind the scenes that you probably don't know about. We have Joe Manafra, who's helping Yvonne Ibera, who's up in the front uh, registration. You saw her when you came in. And they do logistics, behind the scenes kind of stuff. And of course, we've got uh, Brian Day, who runs our TREX program. He's the manager of the TREX program. And usually there's, a, and, and even this year, there's going to be a demo uh, in the room right across the hall here. Unfortunately, Brian is not going to be here to do that this year. Uh, he's here today, but he has to leave because Jim Green has called a special meeting in DC and he really needs to have Brian there. But other people from the team will be here from JPL. I believe we have Sean Malhotra and others that will be uh, giving a demo. And there's a virtual reality component that Greg is gonna tell you about and it's just fabulous. So all kinds of things to see and do, uh, even when you're not in here listening to talks. I'd also like to thank the Scientific Organizing Committee. Uh, that was led this year by Jake Bleacher and Amy Fagan, and they did a wonderful job. The entire SOC, you can see the list of names in the program, did a wonderful job evaluating your excellent abstracts. If not for the abstracts, okay, the abstracts that you submitted, we wouldn't have this excellent program. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. I actually didn't even pause for, for that, but thank you. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, so Eugene mentioned this, but let me also add that uh, we're so happy that this year we can tell you that we have four new teams that we've added to Survey. And uh, uh, I think you already know the, the nine teams that we had from the CAN-1 call, and uh, you'll hear more from all of them in this, this time, but we'd like to welcome into the Institute at this time, uh, if you would stand up if you're here, uh, Jack Burns, Amanda Hendricks, Tom Orlando, and Alex Parker. Yay. Okay, very good. And again, don't forget, you can look at the poster in the back that has all 13 of the PIs and their team names. They have some wonderfully creative names. And, and ask them about the work that they're planning to do for the new ones, and look at the annual report to see what the, the nine uh, current ones have done. Okay, so there's a league town hall meeting that will occur on Wednesday at 445. That is not in the program. It's going to be a half hour. I know it does overlap with the poster session, but please come to that. It's going to be right here in this room. And I think I'm down to my last big announcement. Okay, so for this one, uh, in order to start it, I have to first say that ESF takes the better part of the year to plan. And Greg Schmidt, our deputy director, does that in a very excellent, superb way. So thank you for that, Greg. And he, thank you. Now, Greg and I work closely with our associate directors, Brad Bailey and Christina Gibbs. Christina, could you wave your hand here? There, there's Christina, yay. 
And I don't know if Brad's in the room, but you all know Brad. I was afraid maybe you didn't know Christina yet. So anyhow, the four of us together make up the, science, uh, the senior leadership of Survey Central. And it's a great team. It's really fun to do this job. I love this job. However, I'm leaving this job. And I didn't want you to hear about it next February when it becomes official and I move back to full-time science research because that's what I plan to do. I wanted to tell you about it in person and give you a little bit of the rationale behind the why. So you're all scientists. Like me, you understand the pull. Science is like a sea siren that's calling me back to it. I left about 10 years ago. I left the research that I do in astrophysics, where I study the organic material and the origin and the evolution of stars and planetary systems. Well, now the James Webb Space Telescope is about to launch. And teams all over the world are getting together, and they're competing. They're getting ready to compete with proposals. And it's just a dance. I can't sit out. I've got to go back and be a part of that. So I've asked my leadership, Eugene and Jim Green, and, and people have been very supportive. They're letting me go back to be a full-time researcher right here at NASA Ames. And you'll have a new director, a new permanent director for Survey. We don't know the process quite yet. We know that Greg Schmidt is going to definitely be the acting uh, director as soon as I uh, step away in February. He will be it. And then we'll have to see what the process is and what uh, the people who appoint decide to do. I have every confidence in Greg Schmidt, and I really hope that he is our next director. But we'll have to see what NASA decides. I'm not going to get to make the call. But I wanted you to hear it from me, and I thought it was really appropriate to tell you on the first day of this forum, because I started this gig on the first day of a forum seven years ago. And you guys have welcomed me in with open arms, even though I've been an interloper from the interstellar medium. You welcomed me in, and you taught me so much about the moon and small bodies. And I've become a better scientist for that. So I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm not leaving immediately. It's not till next February. But this is my last forum as your director. And so I wanted to make sure and tell you that now. So I, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah. Thank you. I thank you so much. I I really appreciate that. Did not expect that. Uh, so I will be turning the reins over to Greg more and more as time goes on after this forum is over. And I brought my special wand that somebody gave me. This is a Harry Potter wand. Uh, Glenn Harada gave me this years ago, uh, right before one of the forums. And it has worked very well. I think this is Luna Lovegood uh, wand. And uh, so I'm going to hand the wand over to Greg and let him take over. Uh, what he's going to do right now is come up and tell you just a few more technical details about the forum. And then we're going to get on with the very important award presentation ceremony. But thank you for that warm, uh, warm welcome. And uh, Greg, please come up before I cry. <laughs> Thank you. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> wow, um, it's been an amazing seven years. So, uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be a great uh, um, a great future as well. We have a lot of great plans for uh, for survey. So. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, anyway, I just wanted to make a few additional announcements. First of all, thanks for coming a little bit uh, early this year. Um, the reason is that we uh, had so much interest in the, in the forum, um, and I think, again, our, uh, our SOC, um, that, uh, that we just couldn't cram it in in the, in the normal amount of time. So, uh, so thanks for doing that. I, uh, maybe next year we can institute morning calisthenics. <laughs> to get the blood going. Um, I, I have just a few miscellaneous um, announcements to make of a technical um, nature. First of all, you may know that we've been involved in the Lunar Orbiter 
image reconstruction project for a number of years. I wanted to say that uh, all the images have been delivered to peer review. I just talked with uh, JPL at the end of yesterday, and I'm pleased to say that in about uh, two or three weeks, these uh, images are going to be available to the community. I'd like to give a special shout out and thanks to both uh, Keith Cowing and uh, Dennis Wingo for starting this uh, wonderful project. And uh, you will soon be able to access um, images from, uh, from about 50 years ago of the, uh, of the moon. So, uh, so that's wonderful and use those for LRO. So. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. Um, I wanted to say that we're, uh, we're upping our game as we like to do at Survey here in terms of technology for the forum. Um, we were inspired by, uh, by TED Talks, and so we're uh, people who are um, watching this online. Uh, we're using some new technologies, getting you uh, better resolution and, uh, and still maintaining all, the, all of the features um, that we have had in the uh, past, such as uh, being able to access all of the talks soon after they're uh, given. So thanks again to our uh, technical team for that. Um, I wanted to announce a couple of uh, workshops. Um, first of all, as I hope all of you know, on Friday there's going to be a, a spacecraft autonomy workshop led by uh, Terry Fong here at Ames. We are a uh, co-sponsor of this. I hope that many of you plan to uh, stay for this. It should be uh, very interesting. Um, I was involved in the uh, Vision 2050 workshop on the um, steering committee, and I think these kind of technologies are really going to revolutionize the sort of missions that we're uh, keenly interested in. Um, I wanted to mention as well that a, another workshop will be announced very soon that uh, Clive Neal and I will be co-chairing. This is uh, lunar landing sites, um, and, uh, and it's focused on uh, opportunities that are going to uh, happen when the uh, commercial landers become available potentially as, uh, as soon as next year. Um, this workshop is targeted for January, so uh, be looking for an announcement um, within the next month or so. And then, uh, and then finally, um, I wanted to uh, mention that, uh, as, as Yvonne said, um, we have a couple of uh, of technology uh, demonstrations, one being the Trex that she talked about with uh, Brian Day and Emily Law and their and their team. It's in the in the room immediately across the hall from this from this room. Um, Brian said that he will be there, and they're going to be starting their demo um, in the uh, in the afternoon today. Um, as Yvonne mentioned, he and Emily will not be there tomorrow, but their team will. So uh, please do come and see that. They've done a lot in the last year, and I think you're going to be pleased to see what they've done. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that we have a, a, a team from Goddard that have come from, uh, there's Tom back there, Tom, if you could uh, just wave, um, from a team that, from Goddard who have come to give a virtual reality demonstration. Um, I was uh, very um, pleased to participate in an uh, advanced version of this about a month ago at Goddard, um, I can tell you that I think this is going to really revolutionize a lot of the science that we uh, do. I'm very excited about it. Um, Servia is actually planning to do a uh, virtual field trip um, using, uh, using LIDAR and uh, um, other uh, and spectroscopic uh, data sometime uh, probably in, within the next year. So uh, I think this is going to uh, enable um, a whole lot of new kinds of uh, science. And I want to acknowledge Jen Heldman, who just walked into the room. Jen, it's Jen's uh, vision um, that really uh, made this happen. So please do go across and see both of those um, technical demos. So that's all I have uh, for now, and I'm going to turn it back over to Yvonne. <laughs>